Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and I am now at the Mobile, Alabama Carnival Museum. And turns out that Mobile was the first place in the New World where Mardi Gras was celebrated long, long, long before New Orleans got into it. New Orleans just gets the fame of it, but it all started here in Mobile, Alabama as far back as 1703. So I'm going to go through the museum and show you what they have here. And you might find it really fascinating. Here's some information about it in their brochure. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you an eight minute video that they show you when you come inside as an introduction to the history of Mardi Gras Carnival Celebration in Mobile. This is the big room in front. And this is actually one of the floats that's used in Mardi Gras Parade. It is huge. Now look at this cat over here that is on a little, it's its own little float. What I find interesting about this is that it is made out of what looks like peanut butter cup wrappers. <laughs> this says um 1868. I'm not sure what the connection is. But this is the Oom guy. This is another float. And people stand up out of there and there. And they hold on to here as the float goes down the road. And that guy standing up has got a thing to hold on to. This shows the history of the Mardi Gras in Mobile. And then all about them and their family and everything. And then all the ladies This room has got some interesting things on the wall. Wonder who that is. <laughs> Kenneth Mock Skipper, really. And look at this guy. That is Little Ava. Here's some of the trains. I guess a king and queen train, they call them. And I guess that's her. Here's some of the royalty kids. And here's another room with a couple more big trains. Uh, they never stop all year long making this uh, for the royal courts. And the photo here, go with her grandma's train, so she cut the last two and a half feet off her grandma's train and put that on. The bottom part is from 1934. The top part is 2004. That's her brother. That could be brother and sister, king and queen, but not the same year. And How do you like this dress? There's the lady wearing it. Now this room has a lot of trains in it. They're all behind glass. So, can't see them just as well. And here is the dining table. Wow, how elegant is that?
This is the band room. And a big mural on the wall here of the band. Can you imagine having to clean these trains after they've been dragging around on the street? <laughs> Wow, they have got so many of these trains. Yelding. Lions. Wow, look at this one like a peacock. Look on the ceiling. Bunch of umbrellas. Here's some statues with costumes on. This guy must be a real joker. And in here, Raisin Cane. <laughs> By the way, when you come in, they give you a cell phone number to call and you key in the numbers here and it gives you a description of what all these things are more detailed about them. So it's not a really huge museum, but if you listen to all the narrations, then it could take a while to go through all this. Wonder what this Joker does with these three things. They're really light. Not gonna hurt anybody. <laughs> this is the sacred clan of scarabs. Which if you ask me, looks more like Santa Claus. Here's some pictures on the wall of some of the floats actually in the parade, which is held at night. They have the years on here. As history tells us, Mobile is the birthplace of Mardi Gras in America. In 1703, the first carnival observance took place in the French settlement of Fort Saint Louis, just north of Mobile at 27 Mile Bluff. We come to New Year's Eve of 1830, and that's when a group of young men here in Mobile were celebrating New Year's Eve the way it had been for some time, and that is by visiting the steamboats that were tied up on the waterfront. The steamboats held open house, and the young men of the town um, went up and down the waterfront, partaking of the hospitality of the steamboat captains, and the hospitality was liquid, of course. When they went through, they happened to come by a hardware store, and they saw all these rakes and hoes and shovels, and so they each picked up a cowbell and rakes and shovels and hoes, and proceeded on their merry way through the downtown area of Mobile, which was all there was then. 
and they had such a good time that um, they decided to do it again next year. They did it next year, the year after that, the year after that. And uh, they said, well, we need a name. What are we going to call us? So the obvious name was the Calvarian Uranium Society. Now, the Calvarians had so much fun as they celebrated from year to year that they uh, became very tight in their organization and they stopped taking in new members. Not even their sons, who were young strikers in the cotton business, I mean, most of them. So after 10 years of this, the young men uh, got enough of it. And they said, hey, let's get together and form our own organization. So they all got together and decided, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, let's just call it the Stronger Society. And another one chimed in and said, I think we ought to call it the Stronger's Independent Society. And let them know that, that we haven't got anything to do with those kind of evidence. This organization takes its name from the fact that Cotton, of course, was king in Mobile. And a young man who wanted to be successful started in the cotton business. And ordinarily, the first thing that was done with a young man who was headed up in the cotton business was that he was put down on the waterfront to strike cotton, that is, to mark the cotton bales as they were weighed. And that society has survived. It still is here in Mobile, it's flourishing. And it is the oldest mystic society in America, the Calvarians faded out. The Calvarians at least were consistent. They wouldn't take anybody in, so finally they all died. And that was the end of the Calvarians. During the war between the states, the Mystic Society's functions, as well as the Mardi Gras celebration on Shrove Tuesday, were discontinued. At the conclusion of the war, Union troops occupied the city, and Mobilians felt physically and morally defeated. The Hope and Gideon were soon revived in 1866, by a Mobilian named Joseph Stilwell Kane. Joe Kane revived Mardi Gras and mysticism. Carnival season is celebrated for about two weeks prior to Mardi Gras Day, which is the French name for Fat Tuesday. Ash Wednesday follows with the beginning of Lent. But the preparation for the next carnival season begins almost as soon as the current season ends. Pink is the color of choice for the lovely ladies making their debut at the Mobile Carnival Association Camellia Ball held on Thanksgiving evening. Since the first Camellia Ball held in 1953, these debutantes have traditionally been presented by their fathers. One of these charming ladies is chosen as Queen of Carnival by the Mobile Carnival Association. Following the Camellia Ball, the carnival party scene begins to usher in this fun and festive time of year. Debutantes and their escorts, called knights, are entertained by close friends in royal style all the way through the last parade on Mardi Gras night. Spectacular parades are one of the most exciting and fun parts of Carnival in Mobile. Toddlers all up to grandmas line the downtown parade routes hoping to catch some moon pies, beads, or other throws tossed by the maskers. Mobile has a long history of talented and gifted float builders like Edmund Cell, John Augustus Walker, and Webb Oden. Parades are often followed by glamorous balls where guests gather and dance the night away. And then I retired in 79. It seems like I'll never get out of it. Back in my life. Parade. One of the more thrilling events surrounding Carnival is the coronation of the Queens of the Mobile Carnival Association and the Mobile Area Mardi Gras Association. King Felix III, selected by the Mobile Carnival Association, and King Alexis I, chosen by the Mobile Area Mardi Gras Association, dressed in their royal robes, complete with elaborate crowns and sparkling scepters, crown their queens, who together rule over the city of Mobile during this festive celebration. Kings entertain their courts, families, and friends at memorable dinners following their queen's coronation. The little man on the wall in those days, which was most exciting. Now, you, you say on the wall, you don't mean out in all the house. Got glass, I think it was. Decorated, though. Oh, they're very much 
Look like a drum room, beautiful flowers. No one's even lying as well, but they were too excited. I remember that I was. It was cold, but I was too excited to really mine. And my father was leaving me, and he was very pleased and very proud. King Alexis arrives on Sunday, and King Felix III arrives from the Isle of Joy on Lundi Gras, which is the French name for Fat Monday, the day before Mardi Gras. Felix proceeds to ride the King's Road through the streets of downtown Mobile, and enthusiastically greets all of his well-wishers publicly for the first time. Meanwhile, the Mobile Carnival Association Queen is about to begin entertaining the ladies in her court, along with female family members and friends, with a luncheon held in breathtaking style and grandeur. And oh, these ladies can really wear a hat. So whether you're a Mardi Gras novice or a seasoned veteran, welcome to Mardi Gras and Mobile, the mother of mystics. <laughs> gift shop and if you need to stock up on beans for any reason <laughs> they got plenty here for you well I had no idea that Mobile was so involved in the Mardi Gras until I read about it online when I was looking for things to do in Mobile so if you're coming through here you definitely want to go to the museum Good day, folks.